In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Melsac Medoc. I recorded a video like this, it has some time ago, but the audio quality was very bad, so I decided to record it again, now with more clear explanations. Okay, so before we dip inside, um, Melsac Medoc, there are some important points that I'd like to put here. And the first one is that, uh, of course, Melsac Medoc is a DOS based software and it was used for PLCs from 80s and 90s. So you cannot program new PLCs with the software, of course. Another important point is that um, for the age of this software, there was no uh, simulation ability. So you cannot simulate the software. You cannot do some kind of simulation using Melsac Medoc. Another point, important point is that uh, Melsac Medoc was not the only software back then. Um, we had other softwares such as GPPA and uh, FXJP. And um, so you may um, encounter um, some backup that you may judge um, that backup uh, belongs to Melsac Medoc, but it's not. Okay, so projects um, made with Melsac Medoc must have four basic files with the following extensions PRG, NAM, HDR, and a PRM. Another important point is that uh, Melsac Medoc you probably can run on Windows 10 and 11, but um, I faced some issues, especially related to video. So my recommendation is that you use a virtual machine or a native computer that has uh, Windows XP or Windows 7. Um, it works much more stable in those, under those um, OSs. Another important point is that uh, Melsac Medoc, the only choice we have currently is uh, to use serial ports. So your computer must have either a serial port or what's more common, let's use uh, USB to serial converter. And um, whenever you choose some, some kind of uh, a USB to serial converter, try to do that, picking um, the high, high quality um, converters. Um, I recommend FTDI chipset. So with that, we you will avoid um, uh, incompatibilities or some issues that may happen um, that usually we have with those cheap uh, USB to serial converters. And of course, I don't encourage you to keep using Melsac Medoc for forever because it's already an old software. So migrate your equipment to the newest as soon as possible. Use Melsac Medoc to do basic maintenance, especially backup, or even to open a backup and a check if this backup corresponds to what's in the machine currently. But um, don't keep using that. Migrate as soon as possible. And um, I'll show you there are some ways you can do that. You can uh, migrate your software that uh, you have in Melsac Medoc to GX Developer, for example. Another important point to say is that uh, I'm using Melsac Medoc version 2.40. That's the newest, as far as I know, and it's 32-bit. So there are some versions, and if, if I'm not mistaken, um, before 2.31 version, the Melsac Medoc was 16-bit. And 16-bit software, you find various issues if you try to run it under Windows XP or Windows uh, 7. So I avoid to do that. So always look for the versions that have this 32-bit being said here, okay? 
I really I highly recommend the 2.40 because it has the most number of CPUs available for new projects. So that's it. With all that being said, so let's go and see what we have with our Melsac Medoc. In my case, I'm uh, working with Melsac Medoc in a virtual machine. I'm using a virtual box. So as for this recording, I was using VirtualBox version 7, actually 7.0.10, and it works perfectly. And uh, one important thing is that my computer doesn't have a serial port, so I had to attach to the host machine USB to serial converter. Of course, when we do that, um, this uh, USB to serial converter will work in the host machine. So we have to attach it to the virtual machine. And to do that, uh, I'm sorry, my, my uh, virtual box in Portuguese, but I will tell you that to go to devices, if you have an English, and then you point out to USB here in the menu, then you go to your um, USB to serial converter. In my case is this FTDI FT231X something. So I'll click here and then uh, we can hear immediately from uh, Windows 7 that um, this device was attached to the virtual machine by the sounds, by the bips. I will just check and this is important to you also to do in your case if you have USB to serial converter, or even if you have a serial port, you must check what's the um, COM number. So it's the number that the operating system, the Windows, gives to your um, device. And this number must be used inside uh, Melsac Medoc. So you just go to Device Manager. And inside Device Manager, just check out, I, in my case, I just have one serial port. And my serial port is attached to the address COM3. So that's the address I will use in my Melsac Medoc. Okay. So after you do that, you can focus on your Melsac Medoc and start working with it. Okay, so... Working with our Melsac Medoc, first thing I have to tell you is that we are not going to use mouse in this software. This, this software was developed uh, for using just with the keyboard. That was the most common interface with the user back in the 90s, especially for our softwares that work in the DOS environment. Besides, we had some DOS softwares that had uh, mouse functionalities. Here, we don't have. Okay. And uh, first thing to tell you is that um, uh, Melsac Medoc is organized in uh, menus. So you see in the top, there is a list. If you see from the left to the right, you have start, edit, transfer, print, files, options, and quit. So to navigate, and from these different options, you use your keyboard arrow keys. Just moving and pressing the right arrow and left arrow. And if you want to go inside some of the options, you may use down key, the down arrow key. Or you can use enter from your keyboard. Then you get access to the menu. And as you can see here, let me come back. So to come back, I may use the upper arrow key or ask. And um, you see that um, the uh, menu, the option start, it has inside what's being shown in the second line of the menu. So inside start, you have open, new project, list project, and so on and so forth. Okay. So this way I can see what's inside start without actually going inside start and check it out. All right. So with all this being said, so let's start here. And the first thing you 
have to do is that um, you must assign somewhere in your computer where you're going to store, where you're going to save your projects. And in order to do that, first thing, you must go to Files, and then you get Inside. Then you go to Dearset, and inside Dearset, you must write and assign some path that uh, goes to a folder where your projects will be stored. Okay. If the folder does not exist, when you press enter, it will tell you if you want to create that folder. So let's make an example here. I'm, I'm going to create a folder under C uh, Medoc and then user. I have currently just the folder USR. I'm going to create a user, right? So when I press enter here, it says the directory does not exist. Do you want to create? And I say yes, pressing Y from my keyboard. Do you wish to save this directory setting? I say yes. So that's it. So now we have um, a folder that was created with the name user where all my projects are going to be saved. So um, whenever I create a new software, whenever I create a new project inside Medoc, there's the path where you should look to find your projects. All right. Okay, so let's get back. Once we define it, our user folder for the projects, next step, if you want to create a new project or either if you want to read some existing program from some CPU, you must go to start and create a new project. Okay, so either way, you're going to create or read some existing software that you don't have a backup. So you do that. Okay, in my case, I have here with me an A2 CPU. It belongs to A series. It's one of the available CPUs. So I press enter after selecting the CPU I have in new project. Then I give it a name. So let's say I'm going to read the program that's inside the CPU. So I'm going to call it backup. A2. Okay, so after you put the name, just press enter and then your project is created. You use the escape key, ask, press once. So I got back to the initial menu. And let's say now I'm going to read the program that's inside uh, the CPU. If you have a PLC installed, an old PLC that um, you're going to work with a mail segment doc, First thing you must do is do a backup. No matter if supposedly it lost the program or any any other thing. So always do the backup first. Keep it stored somewhere. And then you can start fiddling like a trying to recover it, reprogramming or even if you have a backup that was handed to you that supposedly for is for that machine don't download that that backup before you uh, do a backup of what's inside that cpu and uh, save in a separate file okay so in order to do this backup or read what's inside the plc i have currently my plc connected to my usb serial port here so after the creation of the project as we have here. You go to transfer. Then you go to setup. And in setup, using the arrow keys of your keyboard up and down, you go to port. And by using the spacebar, you select what's the port number you checked um, in your um, system where the um, USB serial converter is attached to. So in my case it's COM3, so um, you have until COM128 
my case, I just press and keep it pressed. It goes increasing the number and then until uh, I reach the country. So you should do the same and set the port address as you have in your checked in your windows. Okay. So after you do that, you press ask. It will ask you if you want to save it. You say yes. Okay. After you do that, you come here to PLC, press enter. Then you come to this option here. Okay. So pay attention. It has the PLC word, the left side and Medoc the right side. And the, the arrow is pointing to the Medoc. Don't do the inverse or you're going to delete everything that you have in your PLC. Okay. So PLC to Medoc, press enter. It will ask you if you're sure about that. Yes. And then it will, it will start reading the program. Okay. Okay. Transfer is completed. So now we just press ask and ask again. We go to the initial menu. Then we go to edit and we are going to check if our program was uh, read and uh, we have the program here. So you go to letter then then you press F2 press F2 when you press F2 you will see that um, your cursor goes inside this area that is the um, letter edit area okay so here we have our program our program is here okay so I press ask and then I just leave the uh, editing area then I'll go to save and save the program. I then press ask and ask again, and then I'll go to start and save the entire project. Okay. Save. Now the project saved. So now we have a backup of what was existing inside the PLC exactly. Okay. Okay. There's one more thing you it's important for you to do that's to save the values that are currently in the variables that are inside the PLC. With this procedure, we just did by uh, transferring the program from the PLC. What we have saved is um, our program. That's the actual logic and the parameters. That's all we have. But sometimes some machines um, have recipes or those machines have um, some values that are important to be kept that are the parameters of the machine so next thing i recommend you to do is then to you go to other and dwr set okay so here is a table where you have all the values of the variables is that you should come to upload and this upload is going to read all the values from the PLC. Okay. So use upload, never download. Okay. Upload. Why? So it's transferring the values of the, all the variables, as you can see, that are inside the PLC. So you can see here that um, we have some values here um, on some of the variables. We have uh, the zero with the value value. 30, um, D2 with the value 40, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is also important to be kept. So save it yeah, as a setup. Just give it a name. I don't know, machine values. Okay. Yes, so it's all saved. Okay, so then I'll press ask and ask. And ask again and again I will save my project I'll go to start and save so now we have a safe backup let's assume now that um, you have no other way but using Melsec Medoc to do the maintenance and this maintenance is either monitor or change something in the program 
So after you did the backup, first thing you should do, and I recommend you to do, is to make a copy of the software and keep the original that you just uh, created and read, keep it as it is. So in order to do that, you go to Files, Copy, then you click the project that you just um, did a backup, and we are going to make another one here that's altered A2, let's say, okay? And we are going to keep in the same path, okay? Hit enter, there we go. So we have our project copied. And now don't forget to open the project that you copied. So you keep your backup, your original backup intact. Okay. So you come here to start, enter, open. Then let's open this altered. Okay. There we go. Press ask. And now I will show you how to use the edit area. First to monitor, and then we are going to do some exercises related about how to alter something, how to change some contact, etc. So let's go first to the edit area in the letter format. Then I go to letter. And uh, let's suppose um, that you have to monitor this program, what's going on, okay? So first thing you have to do is to press F2, then you go to the uh, editing or working area. Then to start monitor, you press F8, F8 key. Okay, so with F8 key, you will see that um, you can see the contacts when the contacts are green like this. It means that um, they are closed or like this. This is a normally closed contact and it's closed currently. Okay. Another thing is that um, you can see here in the bottom part the uh, some of the variables that are numeric so you can see here the timer the current value of the timer okay you can see the value of the register d30 and so on and so forth and to go down and see the rest of your program you use page down okay use page down don't use the arrow key because it will not work okay page up page down so you can then change the page that you see in the monitoring of the program that's inside your PLC. Okay. So next thing is that uh, let's imagine you have to monitor a bunch of variables that are not here. Okay. Let's say you have here, for example, um, the C1. And if you are in this screen, you want to either see or see both um, T1 value and C1 value. Okay, that's something that's a little bit complicated initially. There are some ways to do that, but I will show you one of the ways. Okay, one of the ways to do that is to first exit the monitor. And to do that, you just press ask you press F9 and here you're going to type all the variables you have to monitor. Okay, so let's say I have to monitor C1, I have to monitor T1, I have to monitor D20, and I have to monitor T0, let's say. Another thing, let's say that I want to monitor D400. And not only D400, but D401 and 2 and 3. So you may use the key F10 and the F10 will give you the next addresses. Okay, so this is a more convenient way 
if you have to monitor a bunch of variables that are in sequence as the address, you just type the first one and then you press F10 multiple times until you get to the variable, to the last variable you have to monitor. Okay. So after you, after you do that, you press F8 and then it will start to show you the value of those variables. There is one inconvenience though here that, um, okay, I can see all the variables, but I cannot see the ladder that's just underneath or behind actually this, uh, this window. So, okay, let's press ask and ask again. There's an alternative way to uh, monitor some variables and while we see our, our ladder being monitored. And uh, the way to do that, put your program to be monitored by pressing F8. Okay. Then you press F5. When you press F5, your cursor come to this portion here. Okay. Your monitoring is um, frozen. And uh, it's waiting for you to type the variables you want to monitor. So let's say I want to monitor C1, as I said. I want to monitor T0. And I want to monitor T1 and D20. Okay. So after I finished, I just press ESC. And there we are. So you have the variables you want and this area here okay so this is another way to monitor the variables you have okay so now we will move to um, letter edit editing okay so letter editing first thing we have to do is to press ask and um, First, I'll show you how to do the uh, letter editor editing offline. What means that uh, we will change the letter here and then we will download the whole program to the PLC. This is the safest form. But uh, in the other hand, it takes time and you have to stop your CPU. What means that uh, your process uh, will be stopped for a certain time um, while the program is being downloaded to the CPU. Okay, so let's start first with uh, offline uh, type of change. And to do that, let's pick an example here. So let's say, for example, that uh, I have to edit this line here. So I have this T1 here and I want to change here I want to add another contact of I don't know M0 let's say okay so I just go to the cursor to the line that I want to add it okay so now you can see that my cursor is here um, on T1 then I press F7 and then you just enter the edit mode. So if I want to add a contact here, I just move the cursor to the position that I want to add a contact. And here, as you can see in this bottom part, you press one for normally open contact, two for normally closed and so on, so forth. So I will press one, I put here M0 and then I will press F7. After I press F7, I get back to the entire letter. So this is the way we edit. We edit line by line. And if you have to add a line, you just edit one of the lines and you add the line you have to add just beneath in the addition when the addition is open. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say I'll add a line between and this line here with T1 and the line with C0. Let's put some dummy line just to understand how the process works. Okay, I'll press F7 
I'll come here and add a contact with M9036. And let's say I, um, in this case, I want to put um, coil. So I press 7 of M100. M100, and press Enter, and there we go. So when I press F7 again, you will see that my line was added just in between this line of T1 and the line of C0. So that's the way you add it. Okay, so after you altered everything you have offline, of course, this is just here on uh, your Medoc. It's not inside the PLC yet. So to transfer it to the PLC, you must go to the transfer. Okay, so I will leave this working area by pressing ask. I'll press ask again. It will ask me if I want to save. I say yes. Then I press ask again. And I went back to the initial menu. Then I go to transfer. PLC. And now I'm going to use this first option. What means I will download from Medoc to the PLC. Okay. So I'll press enter to ask if you're sure about that. Yes. It says the program is not tested. In my case, I know that my program is correct. So do it continue? Yes. Verify. It will check if what's inside the PLC is the same that you have in Medoc. I recommend to do that because many of those PLCs are old and they have uh, memory issues or sometimes they have a ROM memory that does not allow you to uh, actually download something to the PLC. And you will know that because after the verifying, it will tell you that uh, what's in your Medoc is not the same that you have in your PLC. So you will clearly know that you have a problem transferring the program. So I will do a verify, yes. So after that, it says that the PLC is running and it must be stopped in order to download the program. In this point, you must take care. You must pay attention because your PLC is going to stop. And if you have somebody working on the machine area and um, there's a possibility of some, let's say, pneumatic valve um, to close or something like that, and an accident may happen. So make sure that everything is safe for the PLC to stop. Then press yes. And then it will start to transfer the program with our changes that we did offline. Okay, after it finishes transferring and checking, uh, it will give you the results of the verifying this checking. Okay, so comparing parameters, no errors found. Hit any key to continue. This is good. Also, the main timer and counter. Okay. And the main program, what we actually changed. That's good. If we had any problem here, it would appear that they are not equal. So it may be either some uh, a ROM that you have in your PLC that uh, uh, is not allowing you to download the program using Medoc in uh, this uh, regular way, or you have some problems, some issues with the memory of our PLC. Okay, hit any key. And then uh, he asked me if I want to restart the PLC and say yes. And then my PLC is back in business working. Okay. Okay. So this is how I do an offline changing my program. So let's learn now how to do online change. Okay. Online changes uh, doesn't require you to stop the machine, but they are much more dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Right? I mean, if you change some, something in the logic, okay, 
after you finish the changing, the MEDOC will transfer just this change to the PLC. And you must take care um, about the people that's working on the machine because something unexpected may happen depending on the situation, on the logic that you created. So take care about that. Okay. Okay. So I will leave uh, the transfer area just pressing ask and ask again. Now I'll go back to edit letter. Then I'll go inside this um, working area by pressing F2. And now let's say I want to change, I want to remove this M0 contact, but this time I will do it online. So I must change the editing mode of my Medoc to online. And to do that, you must press two keys together. The, the key Alt of your keyboard and the key O. So Alt O. After you do that, you will see here that it changes to a light green background and it informs you you are online. Okay, and to add it, you follow the same procedure of offline. So if I want to edit this line, I press F7. Then let's say I want to delete this contact. To delete here, we don't use the, um, the key uh, of your keyboard, delete. We don't use it. To delete, you use the spacebar. So press spacebar once, and then you see it deleted the contact, and complete it with some line. And to do that, you must use the key six. Okay, I'll press six, and there we go. So after I finish that, now it's the dangerous time. Okay, when I press F7, those changes that I did here will be transferred to the PLC without stopping the PLC, okay? So pay attention. I'll press F7. It will say that it's starting, it's, it's downloading to the PLC and this changing is already there, all right? So these changes in the program are already inside the PLC with that. And it didn't stop the PLC, nothing. So that's it. So that's that's how you do online change okay so that's it so one may ask can i do online change at the same time that i am monitoring yes you can do that okay you can do that by just going online as i did and then after that just press f8 okay if you press f8 while you're inside your working area or editing area then you have the um, the monitoring of your ladder and you are online. Of course, if you have to change something, you must exit the monitor by pressing ask. You still are online, as we can see here. So you press F7 for what you have to edit. You edit and press F7 again, and then you alter that, okay? We cannot, while monitoring, we cannot edit, okay? But we can keep the editing mode online and change between monitoring and editing. Okay, so that's it. Next step, I will show you about diagnostics. Mendoc doesn't have any special feature for our diagnostics. So what we can do here is that um, those old PLCs usually have some sort of uh, diagnostics via some uh, special register. So in case of A series, this register is the register 9008. So in my case, the PLC I have here, it has a problem, okay? So let's see what's this problem, because from the front of the PLC, you just see a narrow LED lit, but um, you cannot say 
uh, what's going on actually. You just know that something wrong is going on. So we're going to monitor the 9008 and understand what's the error code. Then we should look uh, in the manual what is this error, what this error code corresponds to. Okay. So currently I'm um, online. That's okay. It doesn't matter. And I am monitoring. So what I will do is that I'll press F5, as I showed you before, and then I will put here 9008. Okay, so 9008 is enough. So I'll press ask. And then you can see here that the error code is 70. And if I go to the manual, in this case, I am looking to the manual common instructions for the APLC. And this error 70 means battery error. Yes, this PLC I have here, um, its battery is bad. Okay, this is one of the very dangerous errors that may happen with a machine that never stops. Because in this case, it has a possibility that if you turn off your machine, if you turn off the PLC, as the battery usually keep the programs on APLCs, there are some exceptions, okay? But um, just for safety, consider that uh, you don't know and maybe the program is being kept by the battery, okay? So if you turn off the PLC in this case, the PLC may lose the program as the battery um, supposedly is the device that keeps um, the program inside the RAM memory, okay? So if you see an error like this, do the backup as we did here, save it, and um, you must find a battery as soon as possible. Most part of the PLCs talking about A-series is the A6BAT. So A6BAT still is available in the market, but it's not so easy to find, okay? But must be um, changed. In case of FPLC, it's probably the F32BL or FX32BL or F232BL that must be purchased. But always check your PLC in the manual, check in the manual for that PLC, what's the correct battery for that specific model you have, okay? Okay, so this is basically the diagnostics. That's not nothing more than that to do. There are some other registers that uh, may give you additional information, but basically you have to find those in the manual and monitor by using F5 under monitor and the Medoc. That's one of the options. So for uh, working with Medoc, that's all I wanted to show you. So now I'm going to show you something additional to this. That's um, how you export this project to GX Developer. So first thing, in my case, this PLC, and this may happen with you too, A2 is not programmable by GX Developer. So before exporting, before saving it to be imported in JX Developer, you must change your PLC type to a PLC type that's programmable by JX Developer. Okay. And um, in order to do that, we will do some something more safe here. That's uh, we will make a copy of our original backup. We will change the PLC type in that copy we have okay so always you change something never change in the original backup you first did okay try to do that um in a copied um version of that file so i will uh, exit the monitor mode here pressing ask 
then I will press ask again so I am back on offline editing mode press ask again once more once more so after a bunch of times I pressed ask I am back to the initial menu so I'll go to files then I'll make a copy of my original backup this one you may use the backup that you altered it's up to you but the important point is that you make a copy so you don't lose your original backup so I will delete this name and I'll put here CNV GX dev okay so this is to convert to GX developer it's very clear the name of the project okay so I'll keep in the same destination hit enter again and then the project is copied okay so what I will do now is that I'll go to start open and then I will open my project that is to be converted in GX developer so I must change the PLC type because A2 is not programmable by GX developer so to do that I press ask then I'll go to start PLC change and then here I'm going to pick A2A that I know that's a superior CPU um, in relation to uh, A2 or compared to A2 so I press enter are you sure yes and then the project's changed. Now what I will do is I'll press ask, start, and save the project. So it's done. So next step we will do here is to extract this file, pass it to my um, host, and then in the host I have JAX Developer to import this project. Now I will quit Medoc. And to do that, you just go to quit, yes, and then we are out Melsec Medoc. And where's my project? My project is inside that folder under Medoc and user that we created uh, under Deerset in uh, Medoc. So I will open Windows Explorer, Windows E. Then I'll go to the my Medoc folder here, and then we have our folder user. So here it is. So all these files are the set that I have to copy to keep my project. So what I will do now is that I'm going to pass these files to my host. Okay, so I'll create a folder here to convert GXD. Okay, I will open this folder and then I will transfer all these files to my host machine. Okay, so I'll close here, close here, I'll minimize this, and here it is. Um, that uh, folder I created is in my uh, desktop and the next step is to open GX developer so I'll come here to start in the um, Windows and then GX developer and now what I have to do in GX developer is create a project for A2A PLC so I'll Come here to project, new project, then I will select A2A CPU as we have here. And if you check here, there's no A2 CPU, so A2A is the option that we have here. Okay, A2A. Okay. After that, what I will do is that I'll go to project, import file, and import from Melsec my doc format file. 
Depending on your GX developer version, this option may not appear. The version I'm using here is the version 8.508e. Okay, so let's go to import. Then I'll go to the folder. That's my desktop. So here it is. Then it recognizes this um, PRG file as part of the project. So I click OK, and then it will start the important pro process. Yes. So the parameter was imported. Now the program was imported. And that it is. So after you do that, if you want to migrate, for example, to a kill PLC that's newer than the um, A2 PLC, you go here in project, change PLC type, and then you can change here, for example, to QCPU. And let's say, in this case, we pick a CPU with um, Ethernet, Q03 UDE, Yes. And there we go. And even the special M's you can see here that were converted. So that's it. And you can follow this process, even saving the, this project and passing it to GXWorks 2 and GXWorks 3 to get the most recent uh, type of hardware you can do. So that's all I wanted to pass in this video. If you have any comments or if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section below. I'll be glad to answer. And that's it. See you next time.